hope y'all are having a great weekend. Welcome to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. My name is Kaylee. And my name is Desi. Be sure to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell next to the subscribe button to turn on post notifications. Before we get into this case, we always encourage those who have useful information to any unsolved case, please report it to your local police and sheriff department. New York City is known as one of America's safest cities. However, with any city the size of New York, there is always going to be higher crime due to a denser population. From the 2016 Orlando, Florida nightclub shooting, the LGBTQ community has endured several hate crimes. These crimes are not just limited to the group as a whole, but also individual victims. Each one of them is someone's son, someone's daughter, someone's partner. This week, we will be dipping into what happened to Julio Ramirez. Julio Ramirez was born August 16, 1996, to parents Anna and Julio Sr. He has an older brother named Carlos, a half-sister named Erica, and both his parents are from El Salvador. Family and friends describe Julio as a sweet, hard-working man. He had his whole life ahead of him. His cousin Denise talks about how many great childhood memories she shares with Julio. Some of these fond memories include them going to Chuck E. Cheese in El Salvador. Julio was an extrovert and loved to go out to dinner and get drinks with some of his friends. He took his education very seriously, considering he had two bachelor degrees. He attended college at the University of Buffalo in New York. His degrees were in psychology, speech, and hearing sciences. Not only did he have two bachelor's degrees, he also had two master's degrees. Julio decided to move to Brooklyn, New York in 2021. He was a bilingual mental health therapist. He helped everyone regardless of racial, social, economic status. This was his way of giving back to his community. He was also part of the LGBTQ community. Wednesday, April 2022, Julio went to hang out with one of his friends. They decided to go to the Hell's Kitchen neighborhood because this area has lots of nightlife. Julio went to this area many times before to meet up with some friends and have a couple drinks. 7 p.m. is when Julio met up with his friend Carlos because he was ready to have a good time. They went to Rise Bar, Mickey's Bolognese, and their last stop was at the Ritz Bar Lounge. 2.20 a.m., Julio takes his last selfie at the Ritz Bar. A little bit after, Julio and Carlos got split up. 2.58 a.m., Carlos shoots Julio a text saying, Where are you at? Julio responds, I'm outside, and asks Carlos to come outside. It isn't exactly clear what happened between then and 3.45 a.m. 3.45 a.m., Carlos tells Julio he made it home safe. However, Julio does not reply. That same day, at 12 p.m., April 21st, Carlos sends Julio another message. It says, quote-unquote, Girl, what happened? I thought we left together. LOL. End quote. The message it shows is read, but Julio never replies. Carlos finds this odd, so he rereads their entire conversation. He finds that at 3.46 a.m., Julio stopped sharing his location with him. Julio had also been texting with another one of his friends, Shiva, that night and turned off his location to her. When that happened, she became worried. She reached out to Julio multiple times with no response. She became even more worried when the messages turned to green. Green means the messages aren't going through. His friends say it was very odd for him to not respond, that his phone was always well charged and he was always answered. That day, his friends and family went to search for him. They called a bunch of hospitals. Maybe Julio got in a car accident or a medical emergency happened, and that's why he wasn't answering. Later on, a hospital informed the parents that their son was no longer alive. What's even more upsetting than them finding out their son was gone is that the hospital knew he was dead. He was dead since early that morning at 4.49 a.m. The main reason they couldn't notify the family is that he had been found without his wallet, phone, and ID. The hospital at the time said they believed he overdosed. In America, overdoses are sadly common 
and our mental health crisis doesn't make it any better. Family was absolutely heartbroken and in a state of shock. Julio was a very happy person. He had lots of friends, and his family did not believe he would do something like this. Julio also had never taken drugs before. They believed that someone drugged him, especially since he was found without his personal items. The Ritz bar did give the NYPD some footage that showed Julio standing outside for 12 minutes, then walking away. When Julio left, it showed he was walking with three other men. They call a taxi to pick them up. An hour after the cab had picked them up, the cab driver went to an NYPD officer to let them know a passenger was unresponsive. Both the officer and EMS tried to do everything to save Julio, but it was too late. Thursday, April 21st, 2022, at 4.49 a.m., Julio was pronounced dead at the hospital. After hearing the story, the family sees multiple red flags. They knew Julio was responsible and would not get in a cab with strangers. The family has not seen the footage of the three men, which would be important in possibly identifying who these men were. The family wholeheartedly believes he did not die from an accidental or suicidal overdose. That there was foul play involved. Three days later, the family went to his apartment to retrieve his belongings. His brother got his laptop and saw the password on his iCloud account had been changed. When his brother got access back into his account, he saw that there was a bunch of random transactions in his bank account. His brother logged into his bank account and sure enough, all the money was gone. That amount was around $20,000. This was more of a reason to believe that Julio was possibly robbed. To this day, the NYPD have not identified who these men are. It is extremely suspicious that four men went into this cab and one died, and his bank account was completely drained after he passed. NYPD have interviewed the taxi driver, however, they have released very little information. There are some theories surrounding this case. One theory the NYPD potentially believes that this case may be linked to a New York robbery raid. According to one of the officers, they mentioned that it appears that there's a group that's been targeting people in the Hell's Kitchen area. Even one of the members posed as a cab driver. However, most of the time in these robberies, no one ends up dead. We hope the NYPD will be able to figure out who these three men are so that Julio can get the justice he deserves. As of right now, the hospital listed his death as a overdose. Julio was a very happy man. Could he have overdosed from the drugs even though he was not known to take any drugs? While it is very possible that he could have overdosed from drugs because even though people will say they don't take drugs, you never truly know someone. People have hidden it all the time. However, with the circumstances surrounding this case, I don't believe that this was necessarily an overdose, like an intentional overdose on his part. Now someone could have given him some sort of drug, such as like a date rape drug or whatever, and he could have overdosed from that, but him directly choosing to take drugs to end his life I don't think is as much of a possibility because first of all after he died this $20,000 is gone not only that but whenever he was found he was found without his ID phone phone and wallet usually when you find like suicidal victims you're gonna find like their phone and their belongings with them whenever they do die and usually you'll have a note or something but that was not the case he was a very happy go lucky man his whole family describes him as someone who just was like mentally strong and he had his head straight and the fact that he was also like a mental health therapist there's a lot of extensive requirements that you have to go through to become a mental therapist. So I think they would have known if there was something wrong with him. Now, not to say that there 
or some people who do appear to be happy on the outside and are totally not. But in this case, I don't think that he intentionally overdosed. I don't believe he did either. Julio's family believes that he could have been giving a date rape drug. What do we think about that? It is very possible that he could have been given a date rape drug. It's very possible to overdose on a date rape drug. And, you know, you can die from that. Example, if you've ever watched the movie Hustlers, they actually, in that movie, which is based off a true story, of course, um, they gave a guy date rape drugs and he overdosed and died from that in that movie. So it just goes to show, hey, anything is possible. Um, people are very malicious out there and they will do anything to take advantage of people, whether it's, you know, sexually or financially, you are drugged like that. People can force you to go places. So the fact that he got in a cab with three men was that he probably wasn't in his right state of mind. He probably was very much on drugs against his will. Yeah, I I completely agree. I've not seen the movie Hustler yet, but I'll have to see that. Anyway, so I do agree with the family believing that there is a possibility he could have been given a date rape drug. The last time he was seen, he obviously was at a bar and it's sadly still happens today. People spike drinks all the time and sometimes it can be really hard to keep track of making sure your drink isn't spiked. Especially considering the fact that the way he was acting, he didn't seem to be acting like he normally does. His parents have said he has gone to this bar multiple times before and he's usually very responsible. So that's what makes me think that he was given a date rape drug. Also, like you mentioned, he got in this cab with these strange men. Julio was known to be a responsible drinker. Why did he get in the car with these three strange men? One of the reasons why he might have gotten in the car with these three strange men is because they lured him in. They saw that he was like vulnerable. Maybe he went to the restroom or something and while he's gone they spiked his drink. Maybe his friend looked away for a minute. Um, was doing something else and it noticed that his drink was spiked and so then Julio took this drink and he wasn't in the right state of mind because when you're on drugs you're not gonna think correctly and you're gonna have like this altered state and so you're not gonna make the best decisions. These men could have also even if they didn't put any drugs in this these men could have all taken advantage of him maybe they were flirting with him or something and got nothing of it and then in reality these men were going to rob him and he didn't think much of it was who they robbed his big account was completely drained after he had cuts i think it is very possible that he was robbed very odd that his brother has his laptop back and his password to his information was changed and when he looked at his bank account all twenty thousand dollars was missing that kind of just it makes it a little bit more suspicious as far as the circumstances around his death twenty thousand dollars doesn't just magically appear out of your bank account and nobody in his family took it out so either he was robbed or he stashed the $20,000 somewhere and didn't tell anybody, of course, because he died. New York City, Hell's Kitchen area, people will, will rob you, they will stab you, they will do all kinds of crazy stuff. It's New York. New York City, baby. He probably was robbed because, like we mentioned before, like his brother went into his bank account and saw all 20k was gone and they even saw like some of the transactions were for like kids jordans and expensive clothes and a bunch of other random crap you know obviously he said and this money started disappearing from his time of death 
to three days later. You cannot make that up. A dead person is not going to come back and haunt and go in their bank account and a ghost isn't going to go and purchase all this stuff. No, it's a person that robbed him. $20,000 is quite a bit of money. I mean, it's not a million dollars, but $20,000 will buy you some nice stuff. And the fact that all these transactions were for some like a bunch of stuff like jewelry and Jordans. Clearly, that's not his parents going into his account and taking that money out. No, that is someone else who got into his account in New York City and a lot of bigger cities. Because there's a high city population, you will still have automatically more crime. And since a lot of people in New York City, not everyone though, but a lot of people who are able to live in New York City have a little bit more money, you're going to see a lot more robberies in New York City than you're going to go see robberies in some poor areas. If Julio was robbed, why did they target him? I think one of the main reasons why they targeted Julio was because one, he was having a good time with his friend and so when people get drunk it's going to be easy for other people to take advantage of them because of the altered state of mind. They're not exactly going to think as rationally as they would if they were sober. Also, he did go outside of the bar later and when he got separated from his friend. Being alone outside of a bar is a very dangerous situation no matter what gender you are because if you're by yourself and not in a group, it's going to be a lot easier for someone to take advantage. Had he been still with his friend or he'd been with a group of people or had he been inside, he would have been a much more difficult target. But because he was outside and he had his wall and everything, maybe he appeared to have money or they knew like he probably has a lot of money. He was just an easy target for these robbers. Stole the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I am speechless. <laughs> Most robberies, the victim survives. If he was robbed, why did they decide to kill him? More than likely, they decide to kill him because they didn't want him coming back and identify them because they stole a lot, a lot of money. So if he saw who his robbers were and, you know, he was able to identify him and all that stuff, more than likely, police would have tracked them down and they would have went to prison for a very long time. So that could be a reason why. Other factors could be involved as well. Maybe he was robbed, but maybe at the same time he heard or saw something he wasn't supposed to. So they just took him out to keep his mouth shut so that way they wouldn't get in trouble or caught. Yeah, I 100% agree with what you said. That could this have been a hate crime? Julio was a part of the LGBT community. There have been instances of violence towards members. This is also another reason why maybe they did target him because a lot of hate towards people because of a bunch of different factors from your social economic status to your race to your sexuality. That could be another reason why they targeted him because they didn't like that he was gay. Very true. It could be a hate crime on top of a robbery that could have robbed him. Okay. Or they could even have known Julio from just hanging around the bar or just from somebody that was in his inner circle. So they could have specifically targeted him just because of who he was, knowing that he might potentially have money and the fact that he was gay. It is fucked up, my dude. It is. It's 
Because I'm a part of the LGBTQ community. I'm just the B. I'm not the, the L. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> like, I gotta support Right, them. and people That's should so be allowed people. to, like, people should be allowed to live who they want. Yeah, but, you know, a lot of people are closed minded as fuck. Yeah. People need to be more open minded. There's some that are a little bit better than. My parents are pretty good. Well, my parents have always been very open, so. Yeah. Who could these three men have been? Going back on what I was saying just a minute ago, these three men could have been somebody that knew Julio from his inner circle. They could have been affiliated with him through his inner circle. Could have been some random motherfuckers looking to rob somebody. Could have been three men in a gang. Yeah, it is a little bit weird that they haven't really released it or even like show the family because if the family were to be able to see this footage, they might be able to figure out who these three men are or even one of them. Seeing that footage could incriminate somebody because crooked cops are a very real thing. Where is Julio's phone, wallet, and ID? To this day, the NYPD have not located these items. So I think if someone, which I'm pretty sure someone did, but I think whoever basically robbed him probably threw away this stuff or took it with them because if they would have left that there, they, maybe Julio did, could have even recorded like a conversation that he had with these men or whatever and like their fingerprints would be on it and everything and so it would basically incriminate them so they decided to pretty much take these items away whether they buried it or they just took it with them and it's still at their house. Could the cab driver have been involved in this case? The NYPD does talk about the New York robbery ring and how some members have posed as a fake cab driver. The cab driver could very well be involved in this. Everybody's a suspect in this case. I don't care who they are. Use a suspect. Especially with the knowledge about the New York robbery ring. Kind of makes it ten times more likely, especially with the circumstances of, you know, all of his money was drained out of his bank account. He went with three strangers that he didn't know and got in a cab and was not seen after that and all these men got at different stops but Julio somehow ended up where he was for some reason. So it's very possible. Like I said, everybody's a suspect in this case. Yeah, I think that there is a potential that the cab driver could be involved because the cab driver also, he didn't tell officers that he had an unresponsive man until an hour later. Something like interesting too that I've seen lately is a lot of just sus cab drivers because like we did a case a while back, I don't know if you remember it, but with the Arizona cab driver and now New York. And anybody could really pose as a cab driver or an Uber driver because it, it's really easy to pass as one. Uh, also, the fact that they, the NYPD does talk about the New York robbery ring and some of the members have posed as fake cab drivers make me think that this cab driver could be a fake and they haven't really released much information about this cab driver how can we make bars environment safer especially for those who belong to the lgbtq community there's a few different ways you can make the bar safe now obviously you want to make safety for both inside of the bar and outside of the bar. So inside of the bar, some things that you can do. So a place I actually go to karaoke, what they do is they actually have you put your first and last name and your telephone number and emergency contact, um, which I think would definitely help if more bars implemented that because not every bar does that. 
Also, obviously hiring bouncers or private security guards is going to help a lot with the crime. Also, inside the bar, there should be a special word if someone feels unsafe that they can go and say to the bar staff that can help them and definitely have like security cameras both inside and outside and keep that outside area lit as well. I feel like also for a thing that bar staff can do to help people is if they notice someone is having, which they should do this anyways, but if they notice if someone is, has drank quite a bit and is having trouble like getting home or calling a cab or whatever, they should call the cab for them and they should basically escort them out to their cab. There's also some bars that have implemented as well where they have like a, a drink code basically that intends that if a person orders a certain drink, um, it can mean, you know, like I'm in danger or this guy's making me uncomfortable, etc. So that's another thing we should really implement in almost all bars actually because we can prevent a lot of things from happening. You can't always be 100% foolproof, but there's definitely like a lot of things that I've seen that some, some do not such a great job and some do a much better job than others. I definitely will say like out here in North Carolina, for the most part, most of the bars do a pretty good job of keeping the customer safe and everything. What do we think truly happened to Julio Ramirez? I think that he was drugged, whether it be they were drugs or they were drugged by these three random men. Um, whether they were involved in his personal life in a circle or if this was just a random kind of gang thing, who knows. But I definitely think he was drugged and forced to go with these men. I think these men definitely robbed him and then killed him because he knew something that he shouldn't have, witnessed something that he shouldn't have, overheard something that he shouldn't have, or the fact that they wanted to keep the $20,000 for themselves and didn't want to come back to them. So they just decided to murder him. I definitely think with Julio's death, it was not an accidental death. I think it was an intentional murder. The main reason why I think that is obviously with all this money gone and the weird transactions of someone using this $20,000 to go and buy Jordans and expensive jewelry and after he's already deceased definitely points it towards it being a robbery. Also was in a vulnerable situation. There was three men against him, so I think they definitely forced him in the cab. They could have even like spiked his drink as well because it didn't really say if they had lids or not at the bar. And I know like very few bars have covers or lids or whatever. His drink was spiked and they definitely took advantage of him and they killed him for his money and cab driver could also be involved as well as he's met and these men could be a part of the New York robbery rank but it was definitely intent to kill oh sure that's what he did now yeah. sadly rest in peace R.I.P. my dude yep and he was only like 25 yeah, he's a year older than Michael did. Yeah, that's insane. More millionaires are depressed than freaking normal people. Thank you for listening to another episode of Murders, Mysteries, and More. Remember to always keep your eyes open. You never know when someone's creeping. <laughs>